I can put to them the uh, coming to the very end of our session where we will have where we will look into understanding <coughs> the current legal, ethical and regulatory issues in their society. So in the previous tutorial we have covered how um, these responsibilities have to be done within the organization and how everyone has to play a key role. A key pro. So in uh, today's section, we're going to look into some legal issues. What could be the uh, negative aspect of uh, managing these um, information technologies in a wrong way? So we have legal issues, which could be IT-related liabilities, legislation, regulation, regulating to IT, impact of legislation on system development. Then we'll look, look into ethical issues, such as dealing with personal data, um, ethical system design and development. And uh, conclusively, we'll look into what are the risks, such as computer uh, threats, digital crime, privacy, security, the impact of uh, e everything such as e-marketing, uh, e-banking, uh, e-learning, whatever is digitalized. So uh, let's analyze uh, by liabilities. We're now looking to discuss what are going to be the, the factors which will affect negatively um, our IT environment. Uh, so, positive aspect will be our assets. While when it comes to liabilities, we can see that the IT professional will now play a critical role when it comes to operational operations of virtual or sectors and industries. So they will now uh, perform the work and they're also going to be accountable for their conduct by a range of legal duties and obligations. So moving on, these liabilities will now have the role of information technology professional who now increase it significantly for a wide range of applications. So we have to ensure that this liability will not be work, will not affect uh, our IT information technology professionals. And uh, there are, as we mentioned in the previous tutorial, there are uh, several legislation which will now guarantee and uh, safeguard our, um, our environment. So computers and their users have become uh, perceived in our society, where we can now, in general, use uh, use is beneficial. However, as with the uh, technology, computers might be poor and uh, wrong use. So, for ex for instance, there have been uh, several acts by law which are going to uh, protect uh, IT professionals. So here are some of them have been mentioned, and uh, they don't follow a chronological order, but the, most of them have been used and they will always uh, be in, uh, in place. So now we can see how these legal issues uh, can impact our legislation on uh, our system development. So by doing so, what will happen is that the law of information system will now be a collection of observation, um, assertion and generalization characterizing um, the human behavior. 
also you um, covers hardware, software, and all the procedures which will now be uh, involved. And the uh, information system will now be an amalgam of scientific and humanistic discipline, disciplines, which will include computer science, management science, and social science. Um, so other um, impact for our system development, we will now uh, look into symbol system, where by symbol system, we simply going to look into the one that uh, will now uh, uh, messages are encoded, grow more and complex and society will evolve. So when it comes to symbols, it will now be how uh, secure our um, data it is, how encrypted it has been uh, done. Then we also have technological evolution, where technology will now seek the most effective form. And uh, by effective form, we're just going to uh, define uh, qualitative, qualitatively as one of, of as one that it is the best adapted to its application, or as one with the uh, latest numbers of problems with this number problem. Also, there are infinite, infinite processing needs. So this will now, the information processing needs of an uh, organization or society will always um, exceed its information processing capabilities. And uh, this will now uh, impact, will now look be a relevant legal issue. So there are best practice for us to um, avoid these this legal issues, such as having a good system, where with a good system, we can now uh, produce benefits that are um, disproportionately high in comparison to the initial investment. So by introducing the system, we we'll now uh, multiply what was our uh, initial target. Also, we have um, right designs as a good impact where every software that will now involve we not, that we now be involved has to have a right design. Where by right design, we just simply refer to a, a decomposition of functions into menus and controls. So the way the design will be now be structured will now allow uh, will now allow our software to work efficiently and not be classified as a liability. So let's look into a video which will summarize what other legal issues. Legal issues like
Hi everyone, this is Media and Information Literacy and I'm your teacher, Mom Mary Lee from Asian Institute of Technology. And today we're going to learn about the legal, ethical... Hello everybody and welcome to Tech in 5 Minutes. Today we are comparing IT security and IT compliance. Watch this video to determine if compliance or security is more important for your organization. On our channel, we share thoughts on recent developments in the tech industry. Subscribe not to miss new videos. Let's start. What is compliance in information technology? The purpose of IT compliance is to meet the privacy and security requirements of certain governments, markets, and customers. From a business perspective, IT compliance helps businesses avoid penalties and fines, build a positive business reputation, and improve data management in your company. And who's responsible for IT compliance? As a rule, a typical compliance department includes Chief Compliance Officer, who is responsible for the work of the Compliance Department. Then comes the Compliance Department itself. It is responsible for developing and implementing the Compliance Program, overseeing and managing risks, organizing regular reviews and audits, etc. Finally, we have a Chief Technology Officer, who is responsible for the Applied Technology Framework and Infrastructure. Let's review the examples of common IT compliance standards. Some of the most common IT security compliance standards include GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation, aimed at safeguarding the privacy of customer information in the European Union, CCPA, California Consumer Privacy Act, HIPAA, Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, regulating how medical organizations treat patients' information, SOX, Sarbanes-Oxley Act, regulates the transparency and disclosure of financial data, PCI DSS, Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard that protects customers' credit card information, and ISO 2700 Family, which is a set of standards for managing information safety. Actually, we reviewed HIPAA compliant cloud storages on our blog. Check out the article to see how the compliance is put into action. The link is in the description. Now we need to review the security in information technology. Well, IT security represents a set of policies, measures, and tools used by the organizations to safeguard their business data. Implementing security compliance measures helps businesses to increase productivity, boost customer trust, and avoid financial losses that data breaches can cause. Keep watching to know which team members are responsible for IT security and define IT security areas to focus on. As a rule, the IT security team consists of Chief Information Security Officer, who creates and maintains the organization's security architecture and coordinates the activities, and IT Security Department, that takes care of real-time identification, analysis, and prevention of risks and threats perform regular audits. Let's take a look at IT security areas to focus on. A successful information security compliance strategy usually implies controlling and safeguarding four main areas related to data storage and transfer. Among them are user level security, data security, application security, and network security. What are the examples of common IT security measures? Among the best security practices identified by experts are data encryption, firewall implementation, regular backups, and multi-factor authentication. Do you use multi-factor authentication or is a good password enough? Share in the comments section. So what are the similarities and differences of IT security versus IT compliance? Some of the key similarities of IT compliance and IT security include both reduce a range of risks, and both are important for building customer trust. And the key differences that separate IT compliance and IT security include different types of enforcement, as IT compliance standards are imposed by external organizations, while IT security measures are internal initiative. Also, they presuppose different types of losses. Ignoring regulatory standards can lead to fines, 
failing to implement effective security measures may result, on the other hand, in both financial and data losses. And finally, they are different in nature of procedures. Implementing IT security is a more evolving procedure. Once a business has reached the minimum compliance with regulations, there's no necessity for change. So what's more important, compliance or security? Well, IT compliance and IT security are the two intertwined processes that go hand in hand. Do you think it's important to achieve compliance or security for your business? Also, share which topics we need to cover next on our channel. This video was prepared by the Jelvix team. Jelvix helps top brands worldwide to innovate and accelerate digital transformation. We provide world-class enterprise software engineering, design, and technology consulting services. Find our contact details in the description box. Okay, so we thank you for watching this video. You watched the video, which has uh, given us uh, the full insights of how compliance and security work within IT organizations. So uh, I would have liked to find uh, more related to issues legal issue but um we don't find a more suitable one so we now we can now also look into um, other aspects where um we now look into complex interfaces whereby having complex interfaces uh, there cannot be a simple interface to for a complex system so what will now happen is that this is a variation of law of um, requ required requisite um, variety, which states uh, that variety in the system should be at least um, great as the fund of its environment. So we covered the measure or majority of uh, the concept for them so now we can now get into uh, how this can be used when we're dealing with personal data where uh, as we saw from the video uh, related to it security we now have to ensure that the data privacy issue um, privacy has to has to um, fall into our compliance um, regulations where all the information has to be uh, stored and protected by the legal companies such as healthcare record, criminal justice investigation and processes, financial institution and transactions, biological traits such as uh, uh, genetic material, residence and geographic record, privacy breach, location based service and geolocation web serving uh, behavior or user preferences. So, um, dealing with the uh, personal data, the challenge of data privacy, we now will be able to utilize this data to protect from cyber attacks. So, in, uh, within the organization, it's very important to have different departments, such as forensic, uh, um, cyber security specialist and analyst, which will now be able to secure the data within the organization. So, um, ethical systems design and development, where we can uh, see what are the, uh, the entities that will now um, uh, be involved in this. Um, uh, ethical issues such as personal, organizational, regulatory, and uh, governmental. Also, now we we'll look into why uh, would be ethical system designed to improve growth. So, such as the good reason for it could be a good reputation, will be more valuable. Illegal conduct can be extremely costly. And also, good and ethic governance is a, a financially rewarding. 
Now when it comes into disks, you now have several um, uh, type of computer threats where in computing uh, computer security a threat is a possible danger that might exploit a vulnerability to breach security and therefore can be uh, possible harm. So there are different types of threats which could be physical damage, natural event, loss of essential service, com compromise of information, technical failures, compromise of functions. Also, other attacks could be digital crime or cyber crime, whereby cyber attacks will now have hackers which could be involved in criminal activity, such as stealing uh, money online or sending phishing emails to um, Vulnerable, more, more vulnerable subject. So what happens is uh, uh, these hackers can now penetrate into uh, an individual, an individual and person data, and by having this access, access, they can now steal money or even compromise uh, the profit of a business. So privacy has to be really important, not just within the organization, but within, uh, within each single person. They have to be able to set up uh, some security measures, which will allow you to keep your data secure from these attackers. So again, as I said, information security sometimes Shortened to InfoSec, it is just simply the practice of preventing unauthorized access, use, uh, disclosure, disruption, modification, and inception, recording of this destruction of information. <clears throat> so, as you can see, threats, which is simply come in uh, many different forms. So as I mentioned, there are penetration testing, penetration, which could be uh, assessing um, information. There's also social engineering, or maybe uh, phishing emails. So as I said, uh, there are also the last look into the impact of e-commerce and uh, on the human resource management, where uh, e-commerce, which has been introduced in the recent years, has now changed the way people make businesses. And also e-banking has changed the way transactions have been happening, where money is not going to change as cash, but by online transactions. So some key um, impact of E-commerce from operation could be uh, logistics yeah, the large scale of e-commerce platforms could be complex. Uh, economies of scale are becoming increasingly important. And uh, <coughs> also now we have to look into why uh, the how what the effects of online banking where financial integration where you simply increase of online banking activity which has gained the attention of institutional side of the traditional banking industry where you can see a variety of instruction now provide banking service such as prepaid credit card uh, pay their notes business loans and check cash to service to customer for free. So this was everything for today's session. Is there any question for me? No, no questions. I guess